I'm super excited to show you guys how I use Surface Imperfection scratches from Grayscale Gorilla Plus. Okay, so here we are inside a Cinema 4D and we've got a sci-fi crate, kind of a kit bash looking model. Simple HDRI, ground plane with a concrete from EMC. And I've got two materials applied via a mix shader here in Arnold. Now you can use Redshift or Octane or Arnold for this. It's gonna work pretty much the same across the board. Let's jump into our close-up camera. I'll just quickly dissect this material for you. So we've got a painted metal from EMC, which is right there. I tweak the color to this nice kind of industrial yellow. And then we've got right below that a gunmetal kind of iron material that's going to be revealing. So we're going to have our top layer of paint on this object. And then our scratches, our surface imperfections are going to reveal this metallic material. For that, I'm just using a simple mix shader. So you can see I've already got sort of a, an edge wear going on this object. So if we jump down into this layer RGB, which is basically just kind of like a Photoshop layer system with transfer modes and whatnot. So if I isolate that, you're going to see I've already got some initial edge wear and I'm doing that with a curvature. And I've done a few videos on different methods of using curvature to create edge wear. So if you haven't checked those out, I highly recommend checking those out. So this curvature map is in our layer RGBA, but I'm using a C4D noise to multiply on top of it to break up that edge. Otherwise, it would be very uniform like this. So I take this curvature and I take a C4D noise and I use my layer RGBA and I just multiply it on there, good to go. Now you notice we have another input here on this layer RGBA and that's where these scratches come in. So you can see here, I've already got one built just because I wanted to show it to you. So we've got scratch 45 coming from over here that is driving a triplanar and then that is driving a range which is then driving a curvature. So what this is doing is basically saying, okay, cool, Wherever it's white, I'm going to adjust this output to 0.05 as my radius. So it essentially gives us a really nice edge wear on our crate. So if we look at this all together and I turn on that layer, you're going to see its contribution. Now we're starting to get a really nice scratched up crate. In fact, let's go ahead and look at the final output. And if we wanted to make it go further, meaning like from the edge out, we would just adjust this range to maybe like 0.1 or something like that. And now you can see our scratches start to like creep out from those edges a little bit more. That's looking pretty good already. All right, so I showed it to you pre-built. Now let's go ahead and find another one because we're gonna add overall scratches to the entire crate, not just happening on the edges. So let's find a scratch that we like. I'm gonna try scratch 24. I'm just gonna drag that in from our plus library. I'm gonna make sure I adjust the color space because I am in aces. I like the triplanar that we had before. I'm just gonna hold down control and drag that up and pipe that into our triplanar input. And let's isolate this. That looks pretty good. I think we might wanna clamp this down a little bit. So I'm gonna add a range and we'll throw this range right in between our triplanar and our scratch. Boom, something like this. And all, all I'm gonna be doing with this guy is just clamping it down to get a little bit more contrast out of it and maybe something like in there. We'll see how that looks. Okay, so we want to then just add that to our layer RGBA. So I'm just gonna dump this into input four and make sure input four is on and it's set to plus, which it is. So let's go ahead and isolate that. Now that's gonna be pretty extreme. So if we look at our final output of that, our crate is extremely <laughs> damaged and I might wanna change the triplanar to like maybe 1.5, somewhere like there, because I want the scratches to be a little bit bigger. So that's feeling good, but I don't want them uniform over the entire thing. So let's go ahead and dump in a C4D noise. Actually, we already have one in here. So I'm just going to pull this off and isolate this guy, make it like 150 scale, Oops, 150, not 15. And I'm going to push this into the mix of that layer RGBA, which is going to be four mix. And let's isolate that because I'm just trying to like mask off these to happen a little bit less frequently. There we go, something like that. All right, let's take a look at the output of that. That's much better. Cool. So let's jump into the wide and kind of get an idea of what that looks like and maybe jump out and kind of rotate around here and see, see how it's looking. Check our detail as well. So let's kind of jump into where the light is. 
so we can see it a little bit better. Yeah, this is looking good. And there's a lot of detail in these scratches. It's just like really, really good stuff. It's like just even, you don't have to go this heavy handed with it either. You could go sort of subtle with it and have it just affect roughness or maybe just bump or something like that. This is a really heavy handed demo just to kind of show you what they're all about. Really fast, we were able to kind of come in here and create some really nice scratches on this crate in a, in a really realistic kind of way. Let's go ahead and jump out to our close up here and let's just try a couple different scratches. So one other cool thing that you can use our plus library is once you have your image all set up, you can just drag onto the image name and try out different scratches. So let's go ahead and isolate this so we can see it a little bit better. So in our case with this guy, I might want to try one that's a little bit more sparse. So let's go ahead and drag that on there. So that's a little bit more sparse and for that guy we might want to change our might want to clamp him even more. And now with that, we don't need quite as much masking happening. So I'm going to like essentially kind of take this off of it and like create a little bit less masking overall. And this one is I'm clamping it. So now it's feeling a little bit more like chipped, which is kind of a cool effect. So if we jump out of our camera here and we kind of look at what that's doing. I'm, I'm digging this one. It kind of looks like it's been beat up or banged up against the ground or maybe other crates. And you get this like one scratch kind of happening right here and then a bunch of little gouges happening. And yeah, that one's pretty good, actually. Let's try a different one on our base, which is going to be this bottom, this one that's kind of just affecting the, uh, the edges. Maybe let's try one that is a bit more crazy. So this one's just going to be more of like a fine scratch. So I might maybe just map that one a little bit. This will be a little bit different, kind of like a fine, not quite as contrasty, which is kind of interesting. And of course, we could clamp that one as well. Okay, so just by clamping it, it's bringing a lot more detail into these edges right here. But I kind of didn't, I kind of like that other one that we had in there better. So I'm going to jump back down into maybe 40. Yeah, that's better. Gives us a little bit more of a breakup on that edge, which is nice. So let's jump back into our close up. Cool. We'll let that finish up. And that looks pretty good. Now we'll isolate this layer. Surface imperfections are just a really great way to add realism to your scene. You can use these in roughness. You can use them to reveal other materials. You can use them in bump. They're super versatile. And the Plus Library makes it really easy to drag them right into your node graph or into the file name. I've been having a ton of fun with them. We use them all the time. I'm super stoked that we have these now in Plus. Hope you got something out of the video and I will see you next time.